Hey guys, so today I want to talk about some inner child work exercises that can help you when your inner child is activated. So the inner child gets activated when it is triggered. So if you feel super angry, super sad, or a very intense emotion, very intense negative emotion that's just not in relation to what's going on, or you're in an emotional flashback, let's say someone says something to you and you respond back and then they ignore you or you feel ignored and that causes you to overreact or be triggered, what are some steps you can take that can kind of de-escalate that situation um, and take you out of that fear-based state? So. The first thing I recommend is journaling. So writing down kind of how you're feeling and what's caused you to feel that way. That can be very therapeutic. Um, just kind of think back as to what, what time in my life did I feel this. So like, let's say, so triggers are caused by when you were a child or, you know, under some type of authority and you were not allowed to express your feelings. Like they were shut down or you were told it didn't happen or you're overreacting, you're too sensitive. So whenever your emotions, sorry, ignore the noise in the background, it's going crazy. So whenever someone had told you, you know, you can't, you shouldn't feel that way, you're dumb for feeling that way, or completely just ignoring your feelings that caused you to build that feeling inside and that anger and that uh, sadness just stays inside. And that's a, a big leading cause of depression is the anger has to go somewhere. The sadness has to go somewhere. Emotions are energy in motion. So if you don't feel, if you don't release you don't release that energy it goes back inside of you and that's a big reason why anxiety occurs and depression occurs of course i'm not a doctor or licensed counselor this is based off a lot of reading from professionals and yeah just you know this is just i'm not a doctor once again there is also a subset which includes like actual chemical imbalances but i'm just talking about what can cause depression on a cognitive scale is all that anger and sadness like if you're having negative self-talk constantly like i'm not good enough i'm you know i don't if you're thinking like i shouldn't be here you know i'm not good enough once again i'm not anything enough uh, just negative self-talk that's caused by that anger that should have been expressed on another person or that sadness which is just Anger is just sadness underneath. So if you're not like, it's just sadness, but if it wasn't allowed to be expressed, it goes back inside of you. And that later on kills your self-esteem and self-worth slowly because you're turning against yourself. And if that's not your fault, it's not your fault. You're just doing what you had to, had to do to protect yourself. And journaling helps a lot because it gets those feelings out on paper and there's something therapeutic about it. Like just writing, you know, I wanted to tell my dad that what he did was wrong, but I couldn't cause I was afraid that, you know, he would hurt me or something. Or I wanted to tell my mom that it wasn't okay that she went into my room without asking, but I didn't, she crossed my boundary, but I couldn't express it because then my dad would yell at me or beat me. You know, like this is, this is as a child, we are completely defenseless. Um, but that child always stays inside of us. And it, if it remembers, it holds on to that feeling until it is released. And a lot of that needs to be released. And I think another way is to, once again, the inner child work, which is a series I'm doing, is talking to your inner child and just reparenting yourself. And, you know, just kind of how you wish your parents would have talked to you instead of, 
you know, let's say I was like, can you please not enter my room? I, it's a boundary. Like I need privacy and them saying, you don't have boundaries, blah, blah, blah. And that makes you angry. Just listen to your body. And, uh, instead of that, just saying like, Oh, thank you for letting me know. I'm going to try harder to not cross that boundary. I apologize. And that's reparenting yourself. So instead of going out, because you're not going to get an apology most of the time. You might, but probably not. You're not, you're, if you're trying to get apologies from, in, like from the outside source, just, you know, it might happen. It might not, but either, either way we have to move forward and these emotions have to be dealt with. So journaling is one way. Another way is to have a picture of yourself as a little kid and just looking at yourself. Um, because once again, that child is still inside of us. Uh, this is proven in psychology. There's an adult, there's a parent, and there is a child inside all of us. It's all activated at different times. Some have more parents, some have more childs, but they really should be in balance, ideally. Um, a lot of people who are victims of narcissistic abuse or any type of abuse are kind of stuck in child mode because their child never really got to heal. And so if you don't heal, you don't progress. So um, looking at a picture of yourself as a child and saying, you know, what they did was not okay. You did not deserve that. Um, even like now, if you still have abusers in your life who caught, who are trying to tell you what to do or to guilt you, you're, you're an adult now. That's a pro being an adult. You're in charge. You're in control. Even if you don't feel like you are, you are in control and you can look at, look at yourself as a child. I do this sometime and just, you know, Talk to, talk to your child. Say like, listen, I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to make sure you're safe. I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that you're safe. And no one's going to hurt you. Because now that you're an adult, there's really nothing they can, they can do. As a child, yeah, you're relying on your parents um, for safety. Like you can't get a job. You can't work. You can't make money. You don't have, you know, you're a child. So you're, you're helpless. You're no longer helpless. If you remain helpless, that's a choice. Not saying it's easy, but there is ways to heal. And once again, that's why I'm doing this series. It's really, really hard though. It's really, really hard, um, but you can do it. And there's no easy way through. There's no way, there's no way around it. You have to just go through it. You have to grieve childhood you never had. And just looking at a picture of yourself and saying like, I'm going to protect you. I'm not going to let them hurt you anymore. You're in a safe place now. If you're not in a safe place, you can work towards getting to a safe place, but you know, they can't hurt you now as an adult. There's people that can help you. There's hotlines you can call. You have, you can communicate your needs. You can communicate to other people you need help. But that's stuff that you really can do as an, as a child. But now as, as an adult, you can. So hopefully you can get financially independent and so you're able to get away from the abusers. But if you're not, there's still things you can do that can make it better. But ultimately, try to get financially independent so you can get away from the abuse. But that does not mean that it, it goes away because abuse sticks around it sticks around. You can be, there are people who are financially dependent for 30 years and they still, you know, tremble at their parents calling or they still have, because our body remembers the fear, our body holds on to it. And that's like kind of where PTSD comes from and CTSPD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So, um, that's the second thing you can do. The third thing is reparenting yourself. So going through the summertime, first thing is journaling because that's going to make kind of make sense of all your thoughts and kind of you can be able to set goals clearly uh, because abusers will try to confuse you, tell you you're crazy, tell you that you're dumb. But if you have just getting everything logically down on paper is very helpful for step two. And then step two is looking at a picture of yourself as a child 
and telling yourself that you're going to protect, you're going to protect your new child. You're going to do everything you can. You're not going to let yourself be abused. You're not going to let yourself, um, you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be safe. And you're cap- you're absolutely capable of doing that. You're absolutely capable. You might not believe it, but you are. Um, just because you're scared doesn't mean you're not able to do it. And the third thing is the, the, the reparenting yourself part, which if you check out my meditation for calm and focus, that can get your nervous system down to um, get to that level of learning. Cause this is more of like learning. We're learning how to reparent ourselves. So kind of um, going into the actual details, which I will explain, explain in later videos, but there's actually every single stage of your development. There are m- milestones that need to be hit and there is parenting that can be done. So I'm going to go through every single milestone starting from two years old all the way to adulthood and exercises you can do and journal prompts and everything because now that you're an adult, you're your own parent. You are you are now your own parent. You take responsibility. You are the one who's in charge of your life now. They are not like your parents are no longer in charge of your life. It's time to take charge of your life and reparent yourself. And you have a parent inside of you. You're you're an adult. And you know, I'm not saying forgive. I'm saying, you know, you need to move on. Cause if you're just constantly dwelling and, you know, I'm not talking about emotional flashbacks because emotional flashbacks are something that needs to be controlled. Robert Grannon has really good videos on emotional flashbacks. He actually has a whole series. I will link it down below, but you got to get the emotional flashbacks down, the triggers down, and then you are able to truly reparent yourself and move and thrive. So I hope this video is helpful. And just let you know you're not alone. And it's a really, really hard process. You're going to have good days and bad days. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. And please check out my other inner child work series. And yeah, love you guys. Bye.